Brahman and Vaishnava. The conclusive comparison between Brahmins and Vaishnavas. Sri Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur. Translated by Bhumi Pati Das. Continuation 19. The Pancharatrika Vaishnav principles of medieval South India have, to some extent, entered within the current practices of the Gaudiya Vaishnavas. Descendants of the Gaudiya Vaishnava Acharyas became more or less attached to the path of Archana, like the followers of the Pancharatras, and spread subordination to Sriman Mahaprabhu, sometimes in its pure form, but more often in a perverted form. Like the household acharyas of the Ramanuja Sampradaya who are dressed as swamis, Gaudiya householder acharyas have similarly accepted the title of Goswami. While preaching the pure path of Bhava explained in the Srimad Bhagavatam, Sriman Mahaprabhu distinguished it from mundane formalities, but in due course of time his teachings have become distorted into a branch of the Pancharatrika system. This, however, is not the purpose of Sriman Mahaprabhu's pure preaching. Although the followers of Ramanuja and Madhva have remained distinct from the Shankar Sampradaya, whose followers are known as Pancho Pashikas, or worshippers of five gods, the Gaudiya Sampradaya of North India was unable to remain aloof from the Pancho Pashika's influence and took to the service of such people who are averse to Vaishnavas. Actually, the arrangement for Archana in the path of Bhav is not completely in agreement with that found in the Pancharatrika system. The Kanista Adhikaris in the Bhava Marg explained in the Srimad Bhagavatam are practically equal to the Mahabhagavatas of the Pancharatrika Archana Marg, although there is some difference. When the Kanista Adhikaris advance further, they attain the position of Madhyamadhikari, and when the Madhyamadhikaris advance further, they attain the position of Mahabhagavatas or Paramahamsas. Sri Jiva Goswami Pad has quoted the following eight verses from the Srimad Bhagavatam, 11, 2, 48 through 55, to explain the position of the Mahabhagavatas. Translation. Unlike the Kanista Adhikari with a materialistic mentality who engages his senses in enjoying their objects, the person who sees this variegated world as a creation of the illusory energy of Lord Vishnu is neither attracted nor repulsed while engaging his senses with their objects. He is indeed the greatest among the devotees. End translation. This definition is in terms of both mental and physical disposition. Continuing the translation. One who simply by remembering the lotus feet of Lord Hari is no longer attached to the five objects of the body, senses, life air, mind and intelligence, and who is thus no longer entangled in the miseries of birth, death, hunger, fear, and thirst, is to be considered a Mahabhagavata, a foremost devotee of the Lord. The seed of lusty desires cannot fructify in the heart of one who is fixed in the service of the Supreme Lord and completely peaceful, because he has taken shelter of the lotus feet of the Lord. Such a person is considered a Pradhan Vaishnav, or topmost devotee of the Lord. If one does not become proud of one's material body, made of skin and flesh, in spite of taking an aristocratic birth such as that of a Brahmin, executing pious activities like giving and accepting charity, and having a prestigious position within Varnashram society, then one is to be considered the dearmost servitor of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. One who sees no distinction of own and others in terms of his body and wealth, 
who treats all living beings equally and who is always peaceful is considered to be a Mahabhagavata. One whose mind cannot be distracted from the lotus feet of Krishna for even a single moment, even if he achieves the benediction of ruling and enjoying the opulence of the entire universe, which the demigods whose hearts are dedicated to Lord Ajita aspire for, is to be considered Vaishnav Pradhan, the best of the Vaishnavas. A person who is afflicted by the burning heat of the sun experiences no pain from the cooling moonshine. So how can the fire of material suffering again burn one's heart when it has been cooled by the rays emanating from the jewel-like nails of the most powerful lotus feet of the Supreme Lord? Such a person is a Mahabhagavata. If one even unintentionally utters the names of Lord Hari, all his sinful reactions are destroyed. The Supreme Lord Hari never leaves the heart of one who has captured his lotus feet with love. Such a person is to be known as Mahabhagavata, the most exalted devotee of the Lord. End translation. The classification of Vaishnavas established in the Brahma Vaivata Purana, Krishna Janmakanda, Chapter 84 cannot be accepted as the same as the Pancharatrika system of classification. The Brahma Vaivata Purana presents the characteristics of topmost devotees as follows. Translation My devotees give up the sources of material pleasure, sleep on straw mats, engage their minds in glorifying my names and qualities, and devotedly worship my lotus feet with their hearts. They do not desire to achieve any mystic perfections like anima. They do not desire happiness derived from becoming a demigod, an immortal, or Lord Brahma. If they cannot be situated in my service, they do not even want perfections like living on the same planet with me. They do not desire to drink nectar, nor do they desire the liberation of nirvana. My devotees pray only for uncomparable, in undeviating devotional service at my lotus feet. They do not discriminate between men and women, and they treat all living entities equally. Becoming free from the enemies headed by hunger, thirst, sleep, greed, and illusion, they go without clothing and meditate day and night on me. These are the symptoms of Uttama Vaishnavas. Characteristics of the Intermediate Vaishnava The Majamadakari is already purified as the result of the pious deeds of his previous life, and although he lives at home, he remains unattached. Everything he does simply helps diminish the reactions of his past activities. He is devoid of material desires and is careful to avoid accumulating further karmic reactions. The conviction that Everything belongs to Krishna, I am not the doer, is apparent in his thoughts, speech, and actions. Characteristics of the Neophyte Vaishnava The Kanista Adhikari is inferior to the Majamadhikari. He has material misconceptions, even about hearing topics of Hari. Yet, he does not see Yamaraj or his servants even in his dreams. The Uttama Adhikari is capable of delivering 1,000 generations of his ancestors. The Madhyam Adhikari is capable of delivering 100 generations. And the Kanista Adhikari is capable of delivering only four generations. End translation. Although a shadow of indirect devotional service is found among some Pancharatrika Vaishnavas, they will also come to the stage of Uttama Adhikari by their gradual advancement. In the opinion of Srimad Bhagavatam, only devotional service that is pure, unalloyed, and devoid of material desires is acceptable. It is a fact that the followers of the Pancharatrikas also use the word ikantiki or unalloyed to describe their devotional service but because they have accepted the support 
of karma and jnana in the process of worship, such a process cannot be compared with the pure devotional service preached by Sri Chaitanya Chandra. In his commentary on Sri Jiva Goswami's Tattva Sandar, Srimad Balade Vijapusan Prabhu, who is known as the Gaudiya Vaishnava Vedantacharya, has pointed out four differences with the South Indian Vaishnava followers of Madhvacharya in these words. Sri Vijabhusan Prabhu has found the following four teachings in the philosophy of Madhvacharya to be unacceptable to the Gaudiya Vaishnavas. Only a Brahmin devotee is eligible for liberation. The demigods are the foremost devotees. Lord Brahma attained Sayuja Mukti, merging in Brahman, and Lakshmi Devi is included among the jivas. Nevertheless, Srimadavendra Puri and a number of others in Bengal became followers of Madhvacharya's Prema Bhakti line. Sri Jiva Goswami Pad has mentioned the names of Sri Vijayadvaj and Vyasatirtha, who were among the South Indian disciples of Sri Madhvacharya in the Tattvavad school. He said that the Gaudiya Vaishnavas from Sri Padjayatirtha to Sri Madhavendra Puri were all in the line of Prem Bhakti. Vidyadiraj, the disciple of Sri Padjayatirtha, Rajendra Tirtha, the disciple of Vidyadiraj, and his disciple Vijayadvaj, all appeared in the middle of the 15th century. Purushottama, the disciple of Vijayadvaj, had a disciple named Subramanya, whose disciple was Vyasatirtha. Vyasatirtha lived from 1548 to 1598. A.D., so he was a contemporary of Sri Jiva Goswami. Sri 